Today's video is an attempt to help men understand the importance of picking the right woman. I also want to try to help women understand two things. Number one, why it's not good to have sex without commitment. And number two, why high value men don't want to marry women that have children. Number one, women have to understand that feminist ideology has them believing that they can freely explore their sexuality without consequence. The consequence of exploring your sexuality is unwanted or unexpected pregnancy, right? Now, once a woman gets pregnant, then she suddenly wants to put aside feminist ideology and expect the man to follow traditional values. The sisters, you cannot have sex without commitment and expect to get commitment after you get pregnant, all right? Now, if a guy won't commit to you in order to get sex or have sex with you, then he won't commit to you after pregnancy. And why? It's because he only wanted to have sex, not a baby. See, women control access to who gets sex and who gets born. And ladies, if you decide to have a baby for a man that is not committed to you or to the child that, that you decide to give birth to, what does that say about you? Now, number two, why don't high value men want to marry women and have children? It's because if a woman has more than one child with a man that she says is no good, or if she has children by different men, that is an indication that she does not make good decisions. See, a woman who does not make good decisions will wake up one day and decide to wreck her family and ruin a man financially. The man that a woman chooses to have children with is a direct reflection of her intelligence. She picked him, but because she's not intelligent and can't make good decisions, she will just jump up and leave him. And when questioned, the majority of single mothers will tell you that they either left or refused to marry their child's father. See, women who believe that they can have and raise babies alone can best be understood by comparing them to asexual insects and animals. So let's talk about it. Now, let me begin by comparing men to insects first so that the ladies who are intellectually lazy and whose religion is what aboutism won't get mad at me. See, some men are like roaches, okay? They crawl around inside of the walls of projects, making babies every day, and then they crawl away. Some men are like flies also. See, they fly around all day, ladies landing on shit, then they want to come home and land on you. Now, on the other hand, some men are like bees. They will fight to defend their hive, they will sacrifice the life, their life for the life of their queen, and they will make or, or bring things that's sweet to her. The U.S. Department of Education says that 57% of black children have never lived with a father in their home. See, fatherlessness is an indicator of poverty, right? And a fatherless child is four times more likely to live in poverty. The U.S. Census data also shows that there is a correlation between education and incarceration. See, a child who grew up in poverty is more likely to suffer academically and is more likely to end up in poverty and then in prison. Now, according to the Consumer Finance Corporation, black women that are not married have an average net worth of just $5. However, women, uh, black women that are married or cohabitating have a 3,600 times greater net worth or has $180,000 more wealth than a single mother. Now, a lot of feminist black women leave their man pro proclaiming that they can do bad by themselves, but the truth is they always do worse by themselves. Now, in order to fix this, there must be a shift in mindset to understand that life, love, and wealth are team sports. You cannot win in either of them playing alone. Feminist ide ideology is a destructive poverty-producing mindset that causes women in the black community to proclaim that they want a man but don't need a man. Yet many of these same women complain that black men won't, don't pick black women to marry. You see, the Bible says that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And feminist ideology or ideology makes women double-minded and unstable and leaves a lot of black men confused and asking the question, do you want to marry me or not? Or do you need me or not? And thanks to the thousands of women that have called into Kevin Samuel's show, we've learned that many black women have turned down several marriage proposals, Right. We've also seen public admissions by too many so-called professional sisters who believe that they don't need a man to have a baby. See, they want a, a, a man to get them pregnant, but they don't want a man to help them raise a child. So a lot of them will freeze their eggs and they'll pay for an anonymous sperm donor later. 
And consequently, the largest demographic group giving birth out of wedlock today is black women over 40. See, we no longer have a problem with teen pregnancy in the black community. Now we have a problem with geriatric pregnancy. And sadly, a lot of these women claim to be Christian that go to church every weekend, yet they fail to recognize that God didn't make humans asexual for a reason. He said it is not good for a man to be alone. That means God intended for every child to be raised by a mother and a father. All right. But too many Christian women believe that they can defy God and be both father and mother like they are asexual insects or animals. In the animal and insect world, <clears throat> excuse me. The process of a female having babies without a male is called parthenogenesis. The types of animals and insects that give birth through parthenogenesis are like cockroaches, snakes, lizards, skinks, sponges, sharks, and aphids, right? Now, there's several other insects and animals that fit into this category or who can produce asexually, but we're only going to focus on or discuss these sevens because they are the ones that most closely compare to the human female who believes that she can have babies virtually or, or, or asexually, okay? Every man already knows that he has to be aware of the type of women who are snakes and sharks, okay? One of the things that, that get black men in trouble is we have a habit of mispronouncing words such as skink. See, we will say skank when we actually mean skink. But the problem with skinks or skanks is they have high, high body counts and they will pin their pregnancy on any man who they think they can get the most money from. Skanks are the type of women that will have sex with you while knowing they are already pregnant, but they will pin the baby on you. And brothers, the ones that you have to be aware of more than snakes and skanks are the sharks. See, sharks can get pregnant through their mouth and a shark will hold some of your uh, juice in her mouth and then go to the bathroom and insert it in herself. Now, aphids are the type that have the ability to switch between asexual and uh, sexual and asexual behavior. In human terms, that means they're bisexual. Now, when a, f uh, a female does get with a male, she will only produce after her kind and will make mostly girl babies. Women love Michelle Obama. However, men need to understand that there is a reason why she had two girls and didn't give Barack a son. Now, I like Barack, but my boy is like a male aphid. See, male aphids turn out to be half a female or female like. And a lot of black women really love Barack in the same way that they love gay guys. And it's because he acts kind of feminine sometimes. And so there is a reason why Michelle wanted to, to reproduce herself and not her husband. And Muppet Newsflash, brothers, a woman can determine the sex of her baby, okay? Because God, be, because God will not defy her will. If she wants a boy, she'll give birth to a son. Now, asexual insects that have babies without a father can reproduce with incredible speed. Roaches, for example, can produce two to 300 babies or six generations in just one year. And how many times have we seen projects popping out kid after kid with no husband? And again, these females don't want to produce in the image and likeness of men. See, they, re they reproduce after their kind. So the children's genome and, and uh, sexual behavior is usually identical to their mother. And that is why we see several generations of project women in the same family, okay? And since the children's sexual behavior turns out to be identical to the mother, this re reduces what we call chemistry between sexual opposites, which leads to sex without attachment and can lead to inbreeding or sexual um, homosexuality after a few generations. And after nearly 40 years of black women raising children without men, we are seeing a rapid proliferation of feminine boys and masculine tendencies in girls. Like a human woman, an aphid has a soft body and it likes to suck the sap from stems of plants, okay? Now, there was a time when you couldn't find too many black women that will suck the sap from a man's stem, okay? But these days, if a chick has a visible tattoo, it is a good bet that she likes to suck the sap from stems too. And many aphid species are sort of like homosexuals in that they alternate between homosexual activity in the summer or during hot girl summer and heterosexual activity in the fall and winter or during cuffing season. And again, the babies born to these women will be genetically identical to their mother. Therefore, the majority of them are born female. However, regardless of the gender, the sexual behavior of their babies will e can be either male or female. And when certain people claim that they were born that way, brothers, this explains one reason why they're correct, all right? Some of the professional feminist women can be compared to the Amazon Molly. It will sometimes make with the opposite sex, but only a close friend or relative. See, they only want the sperm from, a, from the male to fertilize their eggs so they can have a baby. 
And then some of the BBW feminists are like Kimono Dragons, who is in the Lizzo, I mean Lizard family, but they prey on men as a food source. For some reason, these prehistoric Kimono Dragon looking supersized chicks always believe that they deserve to have a man that is six foot with a six pack and makes six figures. And perhaps they need a man who makes that much money to pay for food because they can eat a third of their body weight every day. Now, there are brothers who love a BBW, but the question that you have to, have to ask yourself is how big? How big will she get when she becomes pregnant? See, the average woman gains between 30 and 35 pounds during pregnancy, and some will gain as much as 60. If she's 280 before pregnancy, she could be 340 by delivery. And BBWs that have a problem losing weight before pregnancy will probably retain most of that baby weight after delivery. See, your BBW might have been a Gila monster before she got pregnant, but could turn out to be a kimono dragon during pregnancy. Now, brothers, if you have a baby with a kimono dragon, she will use you as a food source. So she will try to take as much as she can from you so that you and your next woman can never be happy financially, all right? Now, this reminds me that there are women who are like sea sponges also, all right? They will do whatever they can to sponge off you financially for as long as you can or as long as they can. These sponges are am among the most basic organisms in the animal kingdom, so it's no surprise that many of them reproduce asexually. The sponge woman is the type that says she wants to have a man, but she doesn't need a man. See, she wants to have a baby, but she says that she doesn't need a man to help her raise a child. And brothers, you cannot let yourself be lured into having sex with the sponge type woman. She is going to have a baby simply because she wants one, whether you want one or not. And be advised, however, a lot of sponge women are basic. See, they like to claim that they're boss chicks and they will use the baby to take all the money that they can get from you and then spend it on things that make them appear to be rich on Facebook and social media. Sadly, thanks to Kevin Samuels, we have seen a lot of black women who are single mothers of two or three children that want a man that makes over $100,000 a year. And the problem is that they don't really want the man they only want the upper middle class lifestyle that he can provide. These ladies don't understand that family is the foundation for wealth generation. God designed the family to be the primary organization for wealth generation. And wealth building begins with a man who has the knowledge, okay, the character, fidelity, and integrity to raise a family properly. And a man is the foundation of the family. Therefore, he has to dig deep inside of himself and lay the foundation in order to qualify to lead a family. And brothers, a man must prepare himself to be the foundation on which a family and wealth is built. He must also erect the scaffolding required to provide protection and safety for his family during this building process, right? And that scaffolding is comprised of, comprised of various types of insurance, such as life, health, auto, disability, and so on. Now, another type of insurance his scaffolding needs is the assurance of the knowledge on how to utilize his wife to help him build wealth. And he must know how to operate on the seven spiritual principles that God placed in the universe that help every man build a massive fortune for his family. And you can find that knowledge in my Wealth Builder um, Patreon videos. All right. Amen. Well, that's all that I have for now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Share this video with your family and friends, and I'll be back with something new that nobody told you. Until then, remember that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'll see you next time on Maximizing Fatherhood.